Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger, Tom Mentz and Maximum Destruction, without a doubt the most iconic driver truck duos in Monster Jam history, but some pairings are more memorable than others. Here are 20 driver truck combos we kind of forgot about over time. But first, let's go over some rules. Number one, it must be a Monster Jam on truck and a driver under contract with Monster Jam at the time. So no independent drivers running Feld trucks and or Feld trucks running on independent chassis as they will not be counted. Number two, they must have run at least one season with the truck. So one ops will not be counted as that could be for another day, such as Tom Menson Grave D Wait. What the fuck? But if the fill-in was for a full season, it's fair game. Number three, the truck in question has to have run at least three seasons, which eliminates one-off trucks like Verva and short-lived trucks like WCW Nitro Machine. With the road work laid out, let's pave the way. I am so sorry. Number 20, Scott Buto and Iron Man. Starting off this list is the first truck for a soon-to-be. In 2011, Iron Man gained its second driver in rookie Scott Buto, who had accidentally performed the predecessor to the moonwalk in Manchester in only his second event. In 2012, he would move to the newly re-debuted Team Hot Wheels, where Scott Buto truly became Scott Buto. Number 19, Brian Winston and Monster Mutt, going from a, the first truck of a famous driver to the final truck for a fairly obscure driver. In 2004, Monster Mutt entered its sophomore year on the Monster Jam circuit. Frolic, the first official driver of the truck, had left the sport full-time, not to mention that there were two Monster Mutts, one for Bobby Z, and the second would be piloted by former Inferno driver Brian Winston, who is most notable for his stoppy in Anaheim in 2005. For the rest of his career, Brian drove the truck overseas until his retirement in 2006. On January 17th, 2017, Brian Winston sadly passed away. Number 18, Frank Kremel and Blue Thunder. After being the main driver of Donkey Kong, Frank Kremel left the team before the truck's final season at the turn of the decade. The driver who replaced him will be mentioned soon. As for Kremel, he would drive Blue Thunder for a season, with his only highlight being in one of that year's World Finals Encore freestyles where he nearly commits vehicular manslaughter on two officials. Shortly afterwards, he would be placed in the grinder camp. Number 17, Craig Christensen and Donkey Kong. After running Maximum Destruction in 2009 in place of Neil Elliott, Craig would replace Frank Kremel and Donkey Kong after leaving to drive Blue Thunder as mentioned in the previous entry. Craig would drive the truck on the former Suzuki chassis, where he would score a freestyle win that was also televised in Phoenix. He continued to run the truck until that year's event in Panama, when the truck would be retired. In 2011, Craig would drive full Max D full-time until 2013. Number 16, Morgan Kane and Max D. Speaking of Max D, Morgan Kane was tasked to drive for Tom Mentz for the 2015 season. At World Final 16, he would rock a unique gold paint scheme that did not contain the stupid face, spikes, or wings. For the 2016 season, Morgan Kane would swap rides with the driver and truck. We'll see you later down this list. Number 15, Robert Parker and Gravedigger. Though Gravedigger was independent at the time, Robert Parker was one of Gravedigger's other drivers alongside Pablo Huffaker and Lyle Hancock. Parker left the team shortly after the Gravedigger buyout by the USHRA. Robert would take a long hiatus from driving until 2009 when, when he drove Pouncer in Northampton. Since then, he's made occasional appearances in other trucks. Number 14, Tony Farrow and Gravedigger the Legend. Not only was this the swang song for Tony Farrell, it was also one for Gravedigger 12 as it would serve as a second Gravedigger legend on a normal Gravedigger body, as seen in the World Finals 11 Encore. Farrell would drive the truck in the iconic Arlington show along with the not-so-remembered El Paso 2011 show. A spare body from his time driving was reused in the World Finals 21 Encore, which really shows how long Gravedigger 12 really was. Number 13, Ryan Huffaker and Backwards Bob. In 2015, Backwards Bob returned from a four-year hiatus. Ryan Huffaker was one of two drivers tasked to drive the truck, driving a chassis constructed by Race Source, which was owned by his father, Pablo. Unfortunately, Ryan's truck was destroyed in a fire. As a result, Ryan would share the same chassis with Brian Wright. And before you chassis nerds start spamming in the comments, it was a Generation 1 PEI. There, I said it. Number 12, Nor Miller and Blue Thunder. After leaving Blacksmith, Nor Miller would drive Blue Thunder after a driver we'll mention later left to drive his own truck. Spoiler alert. 
Miller drove the truck in obscurity while Tony Farrell got the spotlight, mainly running in untelevised stadium shows. In 2007, Farrell would be the only driver of Blue Thunder until Lindsey Wink joined on in 2008. Number 11, Mike Wine and Monster Mutt. Oh, God. In 2006, Jersey Outlaw driver Mike Wine would make a career comeback to drive Monster Mutt to replace Brian Winston. Mike would drive the Mutt until he moved to the newly debuting Backwards Bob in 2009, which would be his most notable ride. He retired for good at year's end, and no one's heard from him since then. All right, all right, fine. I'll address the elephant in the room. In April 2023, Mike Wine was arrested on three charges of CP possession. So maybe it's for the best that we forget that this piece of shit ever existed. Number 10, Lupe Souza and El Diablo. Another swan song truck, but this is kind of sad. After J.P. Ruggiero was released by Feld for alleged stalking, Lupe Souza left the El Toro Loco camp again to drive El Diablo. However, over the course of the next two seasons, he and the truck would slowly compete in fewer and fewer events, mainly in Central America, which would lead Lupe to a quietly retiring in 2016 along with El Diablo. Number 9, Colton Eichelberger and Gravedigger. Colton served as a replacement to Gary Porter after he left to pilot Carolina Crusher as he inherited Gravedigger 25. The only highlight for Colton was his the first arena backflip in Des Moines. After the World Finals, he drove Gravedigger overseas until he would swap seats with Morgan Kane in 2016. They would ironically drive their trucks until the pandemic ended their careers. However, since the writing of the script, he has since drove Thunder Roarus in an encore this year at the World Finals. Number 8, Todd Frolick and Gravedigger. Frolick replaced Robert Parker for the 1999 season. He'd only get one TV appearance in the truck, which was the November show in Minneapolis, where he'd win racing and did a very short-lived encore freestyle. Three months later, Frolic would leave the team to drive for Pace Motorsports. Nor Miller would replace him. Number 7, Lee O'Donnell and Team Suzuki. Lee's first full-time ride would be driving the second Team Suzuki. Lee would briefly move to Monster Mutt after Team Suzuki retired at year's end. Number 6, Alex Blackwell and Bulldozer. After being named Captain of the Curse, that was terrible, Alex Blackwell moved to the Elder Bowl for, after Jason Childress moved to the new Batman. Blackwell got minor exposure in this truck, mainly appearing in Around the U.S. HRA segments, and was able to nab a freestyle win in the January Minneapolis show in 2007. In 2008, Alex would move to Captain's Curse, and Chuck Warner drove Bulldozer for the next two seasons until Bulldozer was euthanized in 2009. Number 5, Paul Cohen and Air Force Afterburner. Once again, another instance of a truck's first driver. Paul Cohen was the first driver of Air Force Afterburner. In only the truck's second appearance in San Antonio, Cohen would win racing on Saturday and freestyle on Sunday. Unfortunately, Paul Cohen would suffer a back injury mid-season and would be relegated to a part-time driver from then on. In 2007, Damon Bradshaw replaced Cohen, and, and under Bradshaw, the truck's performance skyrocketed. Yeah, I just had to make that joke, didn't I? Number 4, BJ Johnson and Mohawk Warrior. I bet you didn't know someone else drove Mohawk Warrior full-time before 2017, but here we are. BJ Johnson, whose career up to this point had driven for several independent teams, got his first ever Feld ride and was invited to that year's Young Gun Shootout. And for the next main event, his truck would be lended to Donald Epidendio after a horrifying qualifying crash completely destroyed the front axle of his truck. In freestyle, he would go on to completely destroy the front axle of that truck. Jesus Christ, Donald. As for BJ, his tenure was lackluster to say the least. And in 2016, he would move to Gas Monkey Garage until his retirement in 2019, along with the truck. Number 3, Phil Foster and Maximum Destruction. Foster was thrown into the driver's seat because Neil Elliott went on hiatus that year. No doubt the most forgettable Max D driver, and for good reason, since he did absolutely not. He won more than Tom Mintz that year. Afterwards, he would go be independent and drive for Dan Radoni, driving Tropical Thunder until 2010, when he would retire at year's end. Number 2, George Bellahan and Blue Thunder. In hindsight, George Bellahan driving a truck that's not either an Escalator Mohawk Warrior is foreign to casuals today. But before becoming the punk with all the junk, that sounds extremely wrong. George was just another lad who took over the main Blue Thunder after Lyle Hancock's retirement. Although he won Rookie of the Year in the truck, this was not Bellahan's first truck as he debuted the Ninja Turtle a year prior. 
In 2005, however, he would make a name for himself when he drove a BBC, a big black Cadillac. What else do you think it could stand for, you freaks? Number one, Ryan Anderson and Monster Mutt. Believe it or not, Adam was not the only Anderson to drive a truck other than Gravedigger, at least related. In 2010, Ryan began his monster truck career and was thrown into Monster Mutt after Leo Donald left to drive Iron Man. Ryan mainly ran untelevised West Coast shows including Anaheim and Oakland and would get his first TV appearance in Phoenix. After World Finals 11, Ryan drove Spider-Man for the rest of the year before he would debut his signature Son of a Digger machine at World Finals 12. But now I pass the question on to you. What is the most obscure driver-truck combo you could think of? Leave your comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. I will catch you on the flip side.